Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Shark here with a 2v2 for you today on the map day 101. In a little bit of a break with convention, this is actually a game that I played, but I wanted to cast it because as you can probably guess from the thumbnail and the title, we dealt with a lot of heavy armor in this game and I thought it'd be useful to show the, the community. Playing as the Axis, we have Cool Whip from America. Playing as the Wehrmacht, he's the number 183 player. Playing as a Breakthrough Battle Group. And then his partner, Jar Jar Wick from Australia, playing as the DAC, ranked number 324, playing Armored Support. On the Allied side, we have Ares from the US, playing as the Brit, Australian Defense Battle Group. He's ranked number 483, but if you know him in one, from 1v1s, he's a top 10 player and he really hard carries me on a regular basis. And then myself, playing as the Americans, I'm ranked number 162 at the moment, playing the Advanced Infantry Battle Group. So in the spirit of self-improvement, my co-caster today is my buddy Otto, who's a much better 1v1 and 2v2 player than I am. And I specifically asked him to focus on calling out all of my mistakes so that I can learn from this and get a little bit better. As always, we'll do links and timestamps in the description below. And with that, we'll roll on to the video. Hey everyone, we have a, a fun 2v2 for you today, a little bit of a, a change up as uh, I'm one of the players on the allied side. So naturally I'm gonna focus on the axis here. With me co-casting, as I mentioned in the intro, is uh, Otto. Hey, how you doing, man? I'm doing great. Thanks for inviting me along. Yeah, I really appreciate you taking the time. Uh, this will be fun, I think. Um, so we've got Cool Whip playing as the Wehrmacht, immediately locking in the Breakthrough Battle Group here. Uh, and so he's got the MP40 upgrade for his Grenadiers unlocked. He's going Ketten and then MG42, uh, which I think is a fairly standard start. Then you've got Jar Jar Wick playing as the DAC, who's going for a Krod Schutzen, um, and then immediately getting some Panzer Grenadiers out. So lots of mobility, lots of capping power for the Axis at the start. Uh, meanwhile, uh, Shark has got a Scout and then a Rifle Squad out building a barracks uh, and getting a Mortar. And then Ares going the Australian Battle Group with uh, one squad of Kangaroos uh, and two Sappers to start capping out the field. Uh, so Otto... I, ha I know I have a specific way that I normally try to play this map, but I'm inter interested in your thoughts on the best way to approach uh, Day 101. Yeah, I really enjoy this map. Um, and it's because, yes, the, the gameplay and the, the, the battles happen and develop very differently on different sides. So in 2v2, you have to basically work out at the beginning, are we going to go and double the bottom fuel? Are we going to do an extended fight there? If that fight lasts too long, then the opponent in the built-up in the built up area could take quite a lot of resources. So it looks like um, both teams are looking to somewhat split. Um, we're not seeing a big double effort on the fuel this this uh, this time. Yeah, and but, that, uh, the I, Axis I, grabs I, it early, but the, the Kangaroos force off the Axis in the middle, and they're going to try to decap. Uh, Half-track coming out now, so a little bit of uh, mechanized support as well as the combat bonus. Meanwhile, in the town, you got MG42 pushing off the scout squad, and a Ketten probably going to do some additional capping. Yeah, and I'd say this is potentially the risk of the early mortar. Um, so, <laughs> Sharks kindly allow me to point out anything that I find that um, that sort of contrasts a little bit with the way I like to play. But I really like to get my frontline involved early. I find that if I get my mortar too early, then I can't pin down my opponent. I really want to be forcing them into engagements where they have to stay static. Um, and I also want to be able to prevent any, any kind of capping of uh, extra units like this cap because these fights are quite expensive in resource terms while, they fight, while they're developing and that capping is getting away from you. Yeah, I, I think you're right. You see kind of the loss of capping power on the allied side, right? As the Axis are pushing to take uh, that far corner of the map. Um, Shark's just getting his <laughs> mine. Uh, third rifle squad out now, uh, but the axes are pushing off, and even these grenadiers pushing the uh, the riflemen off of the fuel. Oh, here's the uh, the Kettenkrad mine attack on the mortar. Um, if you got have not seen this, it's it's really gross. I hate that this worked, but we're gonna highlight it again. Yep, mortar destroyed. Mortar team cleared by Kettenkrad. It's now double vet. Uh, unreal. Oh, no. Yeah. So that's a cool little trick you can put in your bag later. Out of cut us off. All right, that's now, very expensive. <laughs> yeah. 
So now you got the allies uh, playing in the center. Uh, and, and I think, you know, this is an effort normally the way that I like to play day 101 is you actually kind of ignore the city and you focus very heavily on maintaining the central fuel, which in this case, we've been down fuel for a while. So that is the, that is the thought process. Yeah. Well, it's necessary now because, uh, you're overmatched in terms of units in the built up area. Now, if, uh, if Cool Whip decides to continue with the mine placement, it can make pushing back into the into the upper building side extremely difficult. So the Allies really need to pivot hard and they need to keep the pressure on. I'm surprised with this uh, Australian build not to see a dingo. I think that could have really helped shut down the, the bike and the 250 play. Yeah, that's a good point, especially because they lack the other anti-vehicle elements. So the Allies push and retake the center and the central fuel, but a good indicator of just how much fuel the Axis have had, the first squad of Panzer Grenadiers are already hitting the field around the same time as the captain comes out uh, for the American player. So the Axis making good use of their fuel advantage. Prod over here, capping up. Super high munitions income. Panzer Grenadiers are going to sprint up here, try to deal with the rifles and the kangaroos. Kangaroos force the machine gun. Bundle grenade comes in, the rifles retreat. Oh, still takes a couple of models. Machine gun cleared again, but it's right on the Axis doorstep, so they will be fine picking it up. And now, so there's going to be a go ahead. There's going to be a bit of a lull in the fighting because there's a lot of the Allied infantry squads running back to base, and I just want to pull back to the attacking choice at this point. It's really crucial for mid game as both players decide what to do, and I, I, we see that the infantry support set send us up, but we don't have tier three tech yet. Mm hmm yeah and so so, so this strategy yeah. this build order is geared towards getting rangers out as sooner as soon as possible you see the first ranger squad popping so the fuel is prioritized not towards bars or grenades but towards the captain and then getting the advanced logistics upgrade so the rangers don't bleed and the goal is to use the rangers early here they're on their first engagement against panzer grenadiers Doing just fine. Yep, and they're gonna eventually win this. Grenade was a little early. Attempted grenade on the retreat path. But the goal is to make use of the power spike when the Rangers hit the field. Yeah, I'd expect to see Cool Whip try to find a response to this. He needs to recognize what's happening, he needs to pull out pull himself out a uh, Ishtumo potentially. If he decides to fight this with pure Panzer Grenadiers, that's uh, that's not particularly advantageous matchup. Yeah. I agree. Although he is prioritizing getting the MG back on the field, which I think is a, a good counter to uh, Ranger heavy play is lots of suppression, right? It basically forces them off the field and then they're really not useful. Engineers closed with the Grenadiers and force them off. Panzer Grenadiers back on the field. He's got two squads of them now pushing past the fuel, uh, looking to challenge the engineers and the other American infantry uh, up in the city. Meanwhile, Aerie is dealing with a concerted DAC push over here. Yeah, very strange DAC build. We're not seeing any heavy light vehicles, no 8 rad no flak truck. We've got two 250s, but neither of them upgraded. We don't have any call-ins either, so we have no, uh, no Panzergas, no uh, assault grenades. They're just... Looks like they're going to be rushing their attack. We've got the uh, mechanized company coming up now. Yeah, he's just teched the upgraded half-tracks, and so I think his thought process is with these two half-tracks here, I can upgrade them uh, with either the flak or the mortars and start to chip away. Very team weapon heavy approach. And now you got Cool Whip uh, using the Panzer Grenadiers to take control of the city and the rest of his element also moving towards the center. Aerie has been forced off the southern VP and now he's focused on the middle and the ally's still at a fuel deficit here. Yeah, yeah two... but we see the first upgraded ranger coming in now. And I would the... expect it would do. It's going to potentially two v one here. Yeah. Now, ranger two. ranger squad versus panzer guns would do just fine. Rangers versus two panzer guns. Uh, now you're potentially struggling, especially with the veterancy on the panzer gun units. But here's a humber, and the panzer guns are not equipped to deal with that. First. Assault light vehicle, and it's very late, but it's going to do just fine here. Mm -hmm. 
And like like you were talking about, this is the downside to not having the motor pool is a Greyhound would also be a great counter to the Panzer Grenadiers. But I don't have access to that. I, I'm very, very infantry centric. It would be strong, yep. Yeah. And we don't we don't have a bazooka squad coming out either, so really really uh, banking on your opponent playing infantry focused and not taking a bunch of the timing. Yeah. So there's the second squad of Rangers. Weapon support center side tech. Right, for the bazooka upgrade. Now this is smart. Jar Jar Wick threw his uh, weak Panzer Grand Squad in one of the half tracks. So even though it only has one model, it's not at risk of getting wiped on retreat. Nice, no, like to see that. One squad of Rangers will push through on the cutoff. Will run into a Stug. They have a bazooka, and it looks like the Ranger oh, weapons training. The, he's got the HE rounds lo loaded. Good shots. Yeah, and those HE rounds do a lot more damage to the infantry than you think. Ah, uh, but Pioneer goes down. Is that in the center? Uh, kangaroos yeah, just push the Rangers. Oh, yeah. There, there, and Engineers laying mines in the city. Rangers going to continue to push. The Stug is here to potentially push them off. No. Unfortunately, it can't be much. The HE rounds are on cooldown now. They won't be up for a while, so he can just, he can just watch these Rangers coming in. Right. Taking all this ground. Probably a premature retreat there for the Rangers and the Rifles. Yeah, I think so. There's, there's yeah. not much fun up here. Another weapons drop coming in. This MG34 in a great position for Jar Jar Wick, preventing the Allies from taking that fuel back. Although now, at this point, uh, the Allies have the entire city, so lots of munitions income. Two pounder AT just... gun in the center. I think that's a really good counter to this light vehicle play. Oh yeah, for sure, and it actually scales really well to the late game, but it's that one ability which can disable vehicle weapons. So if we see a late Tiger, there's the, the DAC player that's not been spending any fuel so far, that yeah. two-pound will come handy. Captain forced to retreat by the Stug and Panzer Grenadiers. Kettenkraut on the field to recap some of the city. And still, I'd say... With the USF player with Shark here, we've got uh, one, still only one Zook as an answer to the AT. Now, you're very ahead in terms of anti-infantry, but with no uh, anti-tank play, you're vulnerable potentially to a big switch over from either your opponent or a concerted double push from both opponents if they pull out vehicles. Yeah. So are you going for a uh, Hellcat for late game anti-tank? What's the thing you think? That's, that ends up being the plan. Yeah. Upgraded Zooks. You, obviously, with the weapons drop, you're driven by RNG. Oh, exactly. Rangers in the center clear the MG-34. Oh, and they're just in heavy cover with the one bazooka. They're going to continue to do work against this That MG horse. was the only thing that could stop this push. And it's, and it's already gone again. Grenade is going to get thrown in on the Rangers. They just move laterally along the wall to stay in cover. MG recruit again. Yeah, these, this Axis team are just simply not respected. And now, the here's a second Ranger push. One squad retreats, but these Rangers are going to roll right through the DAC infantry. MG gets cleared a third time. And now the Brits are coming with the Humber and the infantry. And one P Grand squad going to get away with just a sliver of health. The Humber will kill the Med Truck. Also worth noting that on the north side of the map, the Kettenkrad went down to a mine right by the northern VP. So, uh, the Vermont player now lacking that capping power. He's got the manpower. I wonder if it might not be a bad idea for him to focus on that. This is Ooh. looking very disjointed from the Axis. Panzer Grenadiers, and they go down to the Rangers. Stug reaches the engagement, but is not the right weapon to deal with this infantry push. So Rangers and retreat. The, com the combined population score now for the Axis is barely higher than that of Ares. So, practically two to one in, in favor of the Allies right now. The Axis have got to start pulling some tech out, but we don't even see tier three from the DAC player. Yeah, he's. Uh, DAC player is getting tier four up now. You see a squad of Stoss trooping coming out. Uh, for a cool whip, so he's doubling down on the anti-infantry infantry. 
Meanwhile, you've got Ares digging in the center with machine gun nest. Uh, he has a stolen pack 38 as well as his two pounder and then the Humber. And now he's got a bishop set up trying to focus on the Dax strong point. Engineers trying to lay a mine in the city get pushed off by grenadiers. Scouts and the captain will get pushed off by panzer grenadiers. Three half tracks for the DAC. Oh, Panzer gonna do a set of mine. They're very static here, and the bishop is gonna do steady work. It's not the most powerful artillery piece, but once it starts getting its veterancy, it's very strong and it's poten it potentially has light vehicle training. I'll have to check that, but that's also a very useful side tank. MG42 in the rear, gonna suppress the Rangers and the engineers. Well, over here, Humber is still alive and doing work to these Panzer Grenadiers in this building. AT gun in the rear gets a shot off on the Humber. Oh, the mortar! Oof, and the Humber goes down to an AT gun shot after being softened up by the mortar half track. I always get surprised at how much damage mortars do to vehicles in this game. <laughs> and Lolico 2, don't have to worry about that so much unless it's something heavy like a 120, but even a regular mortar will chunk a lot of vehicles. My only argument would be there's almost no armor on top of most vehicles. And so if you Absolutely did have skin-to-skin -skin contact, a mortar round would do a bunch of damage. So MG-42 no, in the realistic. building. Yeah, MG-42 in the building difficult. suppresses those rangers. But at this point, Ares has a nice strong point here in the center. He's pushing up with his kangaroos. Yeah, double mortar half-track with Kendra Grenadiers in support. Kangaroos have no ability to really do any damage to these vehicles, and now the base MG is going to suppress them, and a Panzer III comes out. Finally. A this is a vehicle. This is a the long retreat way. path. Mm. Oh, the these double two pounders should be alright here. They yeah, but it's. They have a fantastic chance to pen, but. Oh. It should be. The rate of fire should be enough. Oh, there we go. The side armor hits. P3 is in trouble. Oh, it stops to so pivot around the... Oh, but he must... There it is. P3 goes down to the two-pounder. Oh, so trade a P3 for an Aussie squad. I think most ally players will take that any day. Uh-huh. Stoss Troop can come in and clear the pack 38. The Vickers uh, briefly suppresses them before they ignore the suppression and keep moving. Meanwhile, a fourth squad of rangers out now for Shark. Bishop barraging Panzer Grenadiers in the center. And the rangers are going to come in to support the central AT position here. Oh, this could be dangerous, actually. The AT position uh, collapsing. The Stuhl could should be coming in to support, but it just seems a little bit like the infantry and the armor players disjointed here. Generally, really important to make sure you're pushing with your units together, especially when you're able to force off one of the counters, like those AT guns. Let's see. Rangers force almost a full infantry retreat by Cool Whip in the center. Uh, Stug's gonna put him up and try to play against them. Ooh, first shot from the Stug does a lot of damage to the Rangers. Very nice. Yeah. Cool Whip is Ooh. clearly an Imperial Dane fan. He's enjoying the Stugs. He went for the Stug even when it wasn't particularly strong in its timing. A little bit of a misplay by Shark there. If he had hung out and not retreated his Rangers immediately, he probably could have finished off this Panzer Grenadier squad. Knocked down to one model by a grenade. Meanwhile, the DAC, despite losing uh, the Panzer III, have actually recovered the fuel in it and a two-pounder using the half-track to tow it away. So Jar Jar Winks, uh, or Jar Jar Wick, excuse me, really making use of all the abilities that he has. Now, one of my least favorite units is currently being built. I'm not saying it's because it's bad. I'm saying it's because it's extremely oppressive in its current state. Shark is built the 105 howitzer, and currently this thing with free fire drills is an absolute menace. It really is. It it is absolutely savage. And once it gains veterancy, and you get the the shock rounds. Uh, they apply a suppression effect. Uh, really, really effective, even in 1v1s, to be honest. Yeah, we're seeing a lot of top players treating this. We saw saw havoc doing it earlier, not with much success, but. In 2v2, this thing is extremely cost effective. There are very few abilities that will one shot this, and usually you can put it safely behind, uh, enough behind your lines. And if anything tries to counter barrage it, usually we can charge shells. 
you can absolutely devastate something like a Stuka that tries to come in and do some damage. Yeah. Stas Troopin uh, section up here forces off uh, the Americans on the north side of the map. So right now we've got a little bit of a stalemate. You've got Jar Jar Wick built up uh, in his spot just outside of the fuel holding onto it. And then you've got the Wehrmacht player trying to dig in as well and recapping the north. Uh, Ares has good control of the south. KD right now very even, although the Axis are hurting on VPs, 374 to 130. Right. And now a grant on the field for Ares. Ooh. Yeah, I just realized there are four rangers on this field. I've never seen so many rangers in one game. That's not a large <laughs> team game. This, this was the strategy. This was to test it out. And these rangers are going to come up, and these grenadiers, they uh, retreat yeah. early, but they might still be toast. It, it does not matter. Oh, and they are gone. Uh, rangers in the center get suppressed by the MG42 and retreat. Resource cache knocked out. Uh, an infantry section also taken in the center, taking a lot of damage from the mortar half tracks. That'll continue to be a struggle. Rangers and Stoss group in trading grenades. So elite infantry on elite infantry here. And I like what he's trying to do here with the white phosphorus smoke, but he's leading a bit too early. You need to land those properly because they're the only real hope to beat to win in these close quarter engagements. And you can't leave Stoss group in there too long. Good retreat. What's crazy about this is the Saw Troopin are taking a lot of damage, but not dropping any models. No. And the Rangers here being left in this engagement far too long. Oh. Especially not anticipating that Saw would pump out so much damage, but they hit their Vet 2, and at Vet 2 they're going to have a huge damage spike, and that's, that'll do it. And that'll do it. So one squad of Rangers down. I'm actually kind of personally embarrassed by that. That was a uh, me, me microing somewhere I, else issue. When that engagement started, I don't think many viewers would have guessed that the uh, Soul Street would come out ahead. It's not a matchup that you actually see so often because most people will simply retreat when you see Rangers coming in at you like that. Yeah. And so here we go. First Tiger on the field for Cool Whip. Already have Veteran C1 due to the upgraded uh, Panzer Army Command. So this is a potential huge power spike for the Axis, concurrent with the loss of the Rangers. Uh, Hellcat coming out for the American player. Um, meanwhile, Grant has been unlocked, uh, but only one on the field for the Brits. And Axis have really good fuel control, and now we're about to get on a triple cap. Yeah, the only one Hellcat against these two vehicles. And yeah, the Tiger is going to do so much damage to these Rangers. Tiger with a stug in support, no less. Oh, yeah. Now we do have the advanced logistics, it's very important to have by this point in the game, so the attrition will not be horrendous, it will merely be very painful. Uh, but it's not an easy matchup to deal with. Now the Stug and the Tiger are going to push the Grant here. The Hellcat is in the city on the north side of the map and not in a position to assist. Some of the Ranger squads do have bazookas. Tiger bounces a pack 38 shell. Second shot penetrates. Yeah, at this point I'd be yelling to my Brit teammate that I need some assistance. I probably need a 17 pounder in the build, but the triple mortar half track and the Stuka out. It's going to be hard to keep any emplacement alive. Hellcat takes a bunch of damage. Ranger is getting whittled away by the Tiger. That 88 doing a lot of work. And with Stoss trooping in the city, very difficult for the allies uh, to take that back. Tiger bounces a shot from the Hellcat. And this is just allied life right now. Without really heavy AT, uh, the Tiger will survive and just shrug off many shots like that. Meanwhile, yeah, on the I south side, whole, Ares I'd taking back be, control. I'd probably be canceling the reinforce on the Rangers because you know that they're going to run out and hit the Tiger. So you've got. 150 fuel, you've got enough fuel for two more Hellcats. That just, they just need to be pumped out ASAP, otherwise this uh, this territory can't really be contested. There's time to wait as well because it's a decent good feeling. We're losing it. Yeah, that's a good point. Although you don't want to sit on a triple cap for too long and the Axis about no, to take true. over all three VPs again. Now the Tiger not being repaired. Whoop has two Pioneer squads at this point Victory and they are point. on their way out to get that Tiger back to full health. 
Looks like one group of rangers and engineers headed back to the city. While you've got the Grant with some foot guards support going to try to retake the southern VP, which is currently protected by a very low strength Panzer Grenadier squad and the Panzer III. But now uh, Medtrek on the way and multiple more half tracks in range. So the foot guards are going to have to keep moving to avoid getting whittled down. Oh, the Grant knocks out the Panzer Grenadiers. And the crowd shoots and also goes down to the foot guards. Oh, nice so, shot. Good engagement for Ares. Meanwhile, Rangers in the city making a big push here. Sauce trooping back up. There's one MG42. And then walking Stuka barrage onto the southern VP. It dissuades the foot guards from capping, but doesn't uh, doesn't stop it. Panzer Grenadiers get forced off. Sauce trooping in the rear. Second Hellcat hits the field. Oh, lone sort streamer facing down three rangers. Yeah, Activates his damage ability. But and yet, yeah, the again, poor timing this is of the white myth. phosphorus. Yeah, he's not making good use of it. Alright, they retreat. Stug starts yeah. to move forward. It looks like they're going for the howitzer here. Uh, the sauce trooper are going to clear the pack 38, and the Stug right up it's on the howitzer. Ooh. And there's an archer coming out of base. I was wondering when that was going to merge. Yeah, oh, that's out of position, but the monster. archer is not. Stug whittled down to next to nothing. Kangaroos trying to deal with the sauce trooping. Oh, slow reaction. Uh, they eat a grenade, but now the Stug is gone thanks to the Hellcat. Sauce trooping retreat. So the Howitz are still alive for now. And now using smoke, the Rangers are going to surround this uh, MG42 in the city. Very and nice. it is not going to get through three ranger squads here. I'd say one of the biggest things that differentiates some of starting USF players from competent players is how they get the most value out of that, that scout. That smoke package and the recce re flare makes it like a hell of a lot easier to get to the energies. Cool. Tiger challenges two Hellcats, but three Ranger squads in support, and the Bazooka stun on the Tiger, doing a lot of work. Sauce Trooper show up, dive bomb called in, and not enough to save the Tiger, and the Tiger goes down. The Rangers get out before the dive bomb hits. Sauce Trooper and Panzer Grenadier is in support, but won't be able to challenge the vehicles, and the Hellcats and the Rangers are going to make it all the way out. Excellent trade for the Allies there. Devastating. Now, Cool Whip does have enough fuel for another Tiger, but he's going to take a long time to build up the manpower he needs to get that back online. Yeah, full, well, it's a full three-minute cooldown anyway. So for uh, the Wehrmacht, the cooldown starts when the Tiger is destroyed. For the DAC, it starts when the Tiger is called. But still, Axe is applying a lot of VP pressure. They have the advantage, and they have a Stoss Troopin squad about to get on the triple cap yet again. So, allies winning some key engagements, but not controlling the map. Yeah, that's the thing about all this indirect fire. This, uh, this late game build from the DAC player is starting to shake shape now. He's just got a long, thin defensive line with lots of indirect fire, and it's making it very difficult for areas to get set up. So now it's Sherman out for the US player. And I'll, I'll insider knowledge, that was a misclick. That was supposed to be a Sherman bulldozer. <laughs> Stas Troopin captured the North VP. Panzer Grenadier is pushed onto the fuel. And this Sherman's going to move up, which is still a good counter to the infantry. The bulldozer is just be custom built for it. I don't have an issue with this at all. I think getting that one and, and white phosphorus can be really useful for another armored engagement. Yes. We've lost the territory sector. So the Stas Troopin and the MG42 can't really do anything about this Sherman. Pack 40 on the way out from Cool Whip, so good reaction on his part. He's already anticipating this. Meanwhile, in the south, Kangaroos, Grant, and Archer pushing on the P3 and the AT gun. Ooh, P3 doing a lot of work. AT gun gets cleared. Oh, that P3 is one yeah. shot away. And the yeah, Grant I'm gets it on the move with a 37 mil. Wow. Sherman gets pushed off by the Pack 40 in the north. Rangers pushing through the center here. They're immediately going to get suppressed by the mortar. 
captain on the north bridge gets whittled down by the soft trooping. Oh, now Mortar Aftrax doing a ton of work to the Rangers, and they won't get the central VP. Now Bishop coming over to the north side to help clear some of these infantry. That big 155 just not landing shots at that range, so the RNG kind of affecting its usefulness. Here we have four Mortar Aftrax now. It looks like Stuka went down. I don't know if we caught that. That is... Potentially the bishop hit it while it was uh, in counter barrage, and that's really important. Pack 40 can't line up a shot on the Sherman through the building. Oh, the Stoss Troopin, triple vet Stoss Troopin. Will they go down to the Sherman here? They do. So a good pickup. And now allied double push going to the north, so some foot guards. The Hellcats rotating, the Bishop in support. And it looks like holding the South VP, they're going to push for the North VP here. Pack 40 chips away at the Sherman. Yeah, and these pushes are fairly successful, but they're pretty slow, and all the while the VPs are ticking and ticking. Pretty sure the Axis will be happier how well they've held on in these last few minutes, but that's a big grab and a lot of big loss. Foot guards clear a triple vet Panzer grenade there, so cool with losing. Most of his veteran infantry here, he's just got the single squad of Sauce Troopin left. And they're going to try to defend this VP. MG42 is still player, in place. The Dak player is just sitting with this Tiger right now. He should be being a bit more decisive with it. That's a, that's a really important unit that he has. Wow. And he could be bringing up to the top to fight with the other Tiger. Yeah, and Pulip now has his second Tiger on the field. So three total Tigers now for the Axis. Sherman going to make another push for this North VP here. Enabling the high explosive rounds. MG42 is going to retreat. Tiger's here in support. MG42 goes down. Ooh, the Sherman's not going to fare well against this Tiger, but two Hellcats nearby. Yes, and a captain importantly with a marked target. That's a really, really big ability and a good choice to pick that up. Yep. Oh, now a dive bomb coming in to try to dissuade the Hellcats. So that will work. Rangers, though, on the backside, they knock out the Pack 40, and they're going to do a lot of damage to these Stoss Troopin on retreat. Oh, it takes a bazooka right to the dome. What oh, a man. Still four models. There, finally a model drops. Two. And now the Rangers, the Tiger retreating, but the Rangers are in its path back to headquarters, and two Hellcats available. Ooh, Hellcat's doing a lot of damage. Ranger Bazookas stunning the Tiger. Oh, shot bounces, shot bounces, but now the second Tiger for Pulip is destroyed. Meanwhile, Jar Jar Wick set up with his Tiger and four mortar half-tracks in the south to push against a Matilda and a Grant with a Pack 38 in support. Also, Ares laying a ton of mines. They're going to get interrupted by the Panzer Grenadiers. And oh, these Panzer Pilots are going to get eaten up by the Matilda. Oh, Panzer Pilots annihilated. But here on the flank, the Hellcats come rolling in. And behind all of the AT guns and machine guns. Rangers oh, coming across the map as map. well. It's so open for flanking. Yeah. Through the middle. It's nice and wide. Med truck goes it down. Yeah, Command push. Panzer will not be equipped to deal with these Hellcats. And Jar Jar Wick just a little slow to rotate his AT guns. One MGE gets cleared. Two pounder about to get cleared. Tiger is forced to back up and now the Archer can push. As well as the Matilda. MG 34 here still not refacing. Hellcats forcing the issue with the Tiger. Probably should focus the Command Panther. Oh, and they do. So the defensive buff for the Tiger gone. One Hellcat goes down. But Rangers with Zooks hitting the Tiger. A damn time shot. And it's gone. Sure it's done. Oh. Now Grant and Archer on the flank as well. MG cleared. Sherman Bulldozer rolls up through the center. GG's are called. Yeah, GG's are called. And that's it. That's the surrender.
Uh, so as always, going to start with a review of the build order here. And uh, as with most 2v2s, uh, and because the slide's a little bit of an eye chart, we're going to go with general themes here rather than a line-by-line -line review. So Cool Whip, Plan is a Wehrmacht, locking in the breakthrough battle group right away. Locks in the MP40s, but doesn't actually use them on his Grenadiers. So he'll start with a pretty standard opening. Pioneers, Kettenkrod, MG42, and then Grenadiers. He then techs into the Panzer Grenadier Company, gets a couple of Panzer Grenadier squads and a Stug G out for teching Tier 4, going for Stoss Troopin, uh, a Tiger, and then some, some fill-in units kind of at the end, additional Kettenkrod and Pioneers, a second Tiger late in the game, and a couple of Pack 40s and a Stoss Troopin squad to replace his losses. Jar Jar Wick, playing as the DAC Armored Support Battle Group. He starts with Panzer Pioneer and a Krod shoots in a couple of Panzer Grenadier squads. Uh, and then he starts getting half tracks onto the field. So one he builds outright, the rest he gets via assault group Collins two with the Pack 38 and one with the ISG. All four of those half tracks end up becoming mortar half tracks, which really works for him going forward. Um, he gets a couple of Panzer threes out before getting a Tiger, and then pairing it with the Command Panzer four, which I really like, uh, makes the Tiger a little bit more viable until that Command Panzer goes down on the flank. Then for Ares, playing as the Brits, the Australian Defense Battle Group, which he also locks in immediately. Uh, two sappers into two Aussie Light Infantry, uh, then an infantry section and a Humber, gets a two-pounder out, goes for the Bishop, and then his late game is a combination of a Grant, an Archer, Foot Guards, and a Matilda. And then finally, Shark, that, that's me, playing as the Advanced Infantry Battle Group, USF, um, get a mortar out immediately, three rifle squads, infantry support center, uh, for the advanced logistics, because I know I wanted to play Ranger Heavy. So I eventually get four rifle squads, all get converted to Rangers, get a 105 howitzer on the field, then a couple of Hellcats, uh, a Sherman, which is a misclick, believe it or not, and then a Sherman Bulldozer at the end of the game there. Uh, I've got Otto here. We've been going over a couple things we wanted to take away from this game. Um, so Otto, the first thing that you mentioned to me was the idea that both sides had some sort of predetermined build order and weren't very reactive. And I can confirm that this is true, at least on my end, because I wanted to try the Ranger heavy build focusing on advanced logistics. Uh, but you had a couple of good examples, so I didn't know if you wanted to walk through those. Yeah, so uh, so that was the uh, thing I pointed out during the game was I didn't see a tier three pick from you because, of course, you were going heavy into infantry. So what I expected your opponent to do to counter that, rather than going heavy infantry himself, because that's not a great matchup for where trying to fight pure infantry against uh, Rangers and the Stug isn't. Although the HE rounds were pretty good, they're not on, they're not off cooldown enough to to keep the pressure on the Rangers. Mm -hmm. I was expecting your opponent to to go into some kind of light vehicle to help to, to bleed you. So the concept of bleeding your opponent is really important. It's, it's, it's really important to hold territory, obviously. But one of the ways you keep the pressure on your opponent is finding units that allow you to bleed and drain the manpower of your opponent. And Rangers, the, the, the people complain about Rangers a lot. Um, the, the biggest risk of using them is if your opponent finds a good counter, then they are going to drain you very heavily and make it very hard for you to progress your army and develop it. Um, mm -hmm. So that was on that side of the map. And on the DAC side, I found his build very late game oriented. Obviously, he had his mortar half tracks that he wants to use in the late game to deal with AT guns. So you could see his early game was about building up that force of, of half tracks. But his armor was actually very weak, and Ares didn't necessarily respond to that by swarming him with uh, with light vehicles or building enough, uh, building lots of infantry. Um, and one of the reasons he couldn't do that was because he didn't necessarily have the vision tools he needed to spot where the team weapons for the DAC player was that would prevent his pushes from succeeding. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's that's something. Uh, so one thing I wanted to highlight is the team play aspect of this and that's something that you can ask for so he didn't have any recce upgrades i think he had a bren squad and he had a couple kangaroos but i had the scouts right and with the flare upgrades so that's something that he can call for um i will say at, at, just from having played the game that me and aries were constantly on the same page uh and so that definitely helped us take some of our engagements especially later on we when we took kind of the north uh side of the town um, one thing that you uh, you also wanted to highlight, just talking predetermined build orders, though, um, you mentioned this before. So one of the reasons that Jar Jar Wick was able to build up so many mortar half tracks was he wasn't really worried about that, uh, the chaffy play, the rapid flank that could have knocked them out early uh, because he knew I was, I was 
so heavily in infantry and it didn't have any light vehicles hit the field. So that's, a, you know, something that I can take away looking at the build order, like not just what do I need to win my engagements, but what is my teammate dealing with and how can I solve that problem for him? Um, and so I didn't really adapt to that. And that's something that like now going forward, playing these games, I'm, I'm going to pay attention to. Yeah, it's always a trade-off, isn't it? Especially in 2v2. It's like, when is it a good time for me to go and support my teammate mm -hmm. on that side of the map? And one of the re things I like about this map is, um, okay, if you lose a bit of pressure on the the building side, well, that kind of buttons up your opponent there. It'll take him quite a long time to rotate. So if he overextends there, then he can't respond so quickly to you just simply busting down middle mm -hmm. and coming in for a big flank, like what we saw at the end of the game. But mm -hmm. that can happen just as devastatingly within the first 10, 15 minutes. Yeah. And so as a side note, I was thinking about this earlier. What What's interesting about this map is all of the retreat lines are basically the same distance, right? Because it's very flat and very square. Uh, there's a lot less risk in deep flanks against your, your opponent or uh, your, your teammates kind of opponent, if you will, uh, because the, the retreat distance doesn't really change. And getting back to friendly lines is about the same distance every time. Contrast that with a map, uh, like a, there's a 1v1 map. Oh, God, the name is escaping me. Um, but where both players are each in like an adjacent corner. And so if you get caught with a unit, you know, on the opposite side of the map, it has yeah, a Toronto. long path. <laughs> Toronto. Yes, exactly. Toronto, Toronto close brutal coastline. Path. Brutal retreat paths. Uh, and so uh, on this map, because it's very square, you don't have that. And so there's a lot more to be gained and a lot less uh, at risk in these long flanking maneuvers. And I think that's where um, factions like the USF and the DAC really shine because they are more mobile. Uh, they can Their units might be a little bit more vulnerable on retreat, uh, but they can move around the map a lot faster than some of the more team, uh, team weapon heavy, you know, the Brits, the Wehrmacht, uh, or some of the more heavy vehicles like the Tiger, the Matilda, uh, and the Archer. Uh, the last thing that you mentioned I want to highlight, because I don't really know this very well. I, I play Brits, but not that often. The Command Steward, you said, would have been really valuable for us in the, the middle of the map. Can you talk about that? Yeah, this is a bit of a pet unit of mine. And sometimes I try to make it work in situations where it's not so, not so <laughs> strong. But I'm convinced that this map is one of the best Command Steward uh, I would, I, maps in the game. I probably build it every single time. Mm -hmm. and it works, it synergizes super well with the Australian Commander as well because you can, it allows you long range spotting with that upgrade. So it's quite expensive, it's 60 munitions, mm. and the opportunity cost is you don't get the self repair. But what it gives you is a very, very powerful spotting tool. It disables your weapon but gives you long range vision. So it helps to spot for your archer, helps to spot for your bishop. And also allows you to mark targets. So if you have one of those, if you if the tigers have been better microed, if they've been better supported, if they've been busting through the lines, then that steward can mark the tiger, and that's going to take 25% bonus damage from all sources. And it's also going to be easy to penetrate as well. So that'll mm -hmm. help you that can help focus down those targets really, really well. Yeah, we saw the mark target briefly from the captain uh in the city up north. One thing I actually like this. So in Co2, Mark Target caused a plane to come out and circle the vehicle, right? Um, but in this case, Mark Target's driven by the captain's presence on the field. So as soon as the Stoss Troop and started to whittle it down and had to retreat, the Mark Target debuff on the Tiger went away. So I'm glad, I think that's a good balance mechanic. I, I like that. Uh, but it is, it is powerful, especially when you've got Hellcats trying to deal with a Tiger at range. They need that damage buff. They need that penetration buff. Uh, otherwise the Tiger can usually handle them. Uh, the last thing as kind of a general highlight that we wanted to talk about was, uh, the the opportunity cost specifically for for the Wehrmacht player and and i don't want to make it sound like i'm beating up on cool whip because i think he played a great game but the opportunity cost of two tigers is pretty high especially when you already had the panzer Army come out uh command out right so there's no more additional fuel investment in tech you got the stop trooping on the field so that's two tigers is 1400 manpower and 440 fuel right that is four brum bears and then some um, that, you know, that's a mix of Panzer IVs and Brum Bears and all those vehicles like you pointed out, if light vehicles are good against Rangers, medium vehicles are better. Um, it's, you know, especially like a, a Brum Bear two, where the Rangers can't sit in and hang out. They take one shot, they're down three or four models and they have to back off. And now you have the Rangers off the field uh, where they're not as effective. Um, so I didn't know if you had any other any other thoughts on that. 
Um, it's just something like, yeah, it's it's crazy as an ally player to see multiple tigers in the field at the same time. But if you get the kill, uh, it can really swing the game in your favor. Yeah, and I think his issue was that simply that his supporting his build was entirely focused on what to do about the rangers, right? Mm. So he has the he has a soft troop in for that. He has the tiger, but collectively, a bunch of a bunch of rangers and hellcats is he's going to win that matchup. Um, you're simply going to overwhelm the infantry support, and there's nothing that can deal with vehicles except for the tiger itself. So mm. if it's ever caught out of position, there's very little support. So I think thinking a bit more carefully about how to how to f- support the tiger in that built up area you can keep yeah if you had a couple of jaegers you could keep those safe uh, and um and camoed mm-hmm. so they're not necessarily going to get ru- rushed down by the rangers try- straight away you can zone them off with the with the tiger and then if the hellcats come in then you can pop some jaegers out of, co- out of any of those cover positions and quickly turn that engagement because those hellcats don't have much health yeah and then also worth you know trying to as an axis player noticing what command choices that the u.s players made so right so once you start seeing the the vehicle debuff from the bazookas you know like okay he's got the ranger weapon training uh it means he doesn't have the the boys uh as, as sarge calls them right the infantry assault um i i think on this map and especially trying to use the rangers for at i'm going to go for the weapons training every time i think the the stun to the vehicles makes it worth it but again on other maps where you have kind of these weird engagement lines or retreat lines that infantry assault package can be really helpful because you you call it on super deep and it just cuts a wide path. I think this map is uh, is too wide for that to really be effective, which is why I chose a, the weapons training. But that should also kind of drive how you play, right? Because now the tiger is not immune to rangers as long as they have zooks. It's going to take extra damage. It's not going to be able to, to get shots off as fast as you want. And so you definitely need to support it more with infantry in that case. That was those were kind of the general remarks. And now in the spirit of self-improvement, uh, anything that you had for me, things that I can I can do better, or things I should have done differently. Well, I think um, with this build, if you're going to commit to this extremely greedy Ranger build, um, I think I'd probably be out trying to get my teammate to make sure he provides the the sort of heavy light vehicle cover. Mm-hmm. So if you're worried, the, the, the only the best counter to what you're doing is going to be with uh with eight rads or light vehicles so if if you if you know you your teammate can cover you through that period i'm sure this build can work pretty well uh but personally i'd find i, I think anything more than two rangers is going to be a, a, a huge risk of bleed if your opponent makes makes smart attacking decisions and is slightly more switched on with a matchup um so i think in, in absence of that i think uh, or, or with other decisions around teching i think like being being aware that you're also not offering a huge amount of cover to your uh, to your teammate mm-hmm. in terms of vehicle support early, so you, you have to be you're playing a style that's that's sort of high risk high reward, I would say, and so I, I, that's how I view the overall uh, um, approach to the to the USF you're playing. It's not necessarily a, a a sort of reactive style. It's very much a I've got a plan and I'm going to build to this devastating late game composition. Yeah, you know, that, that makes a lot of sense. I think the way I normally play Rangers is I play a USF build relatively normally, and then I get a squad or two of Rangers for the late game to kind of make sure I win some of those infantry engagements. Uh, so that means I'm already teching BARs and grenades and, and everything else and playing with light vehicles. This was a little bit of an experiment, right? This uh, Ares has suggested it, but if you want to go full Ranger, you know, you go ISC, advanced logistics, and then try to get the goal is four ranger squads on the field. It causes a pretty big power spike in the mid game because there are very few infantry that can deal with them, but makes you really vulnerable to stuff like suppression. Flak for Ling is a great counter. MG 42s uh, layered are a great counter and guys that have really good micro can typically deal with it. So you're, you're right. High risk, high reward. Um, I will call myself out. One of the things I struggle with is microing across the map at the same time. Uh, and so you saw a couple of times I lost a unit uh, in this match. So the first one obviously being the the mortar team to the Kettenkrod. A stupid assumption on my part. I thought like, oh yeah, the carbines on the mortar are going to take care of the Kettenkrod, no problem. So that was a huge, huge kick in the nuts uh, early. Uh, and then losing the Ranger squad to the Stoss troop in there. Uh, I really thought Rangers at close range would win this engagement. And I went off and was doing something else and came back and they had, you know, one model left and were retreating and, and that was it. So... 
um other than that I, I thought it was a fun game i was happy i normally when the opponent gets out of tiger it usually kind of tilts the game uh, against me so i was pretty happy to be able to deal with that personally um i was also happy to not be hard carried by aries uh completely which is normally the case when i played twos with him uh he's a phenomenal player um and then uh you know hats off to the uh the opponents uh cool whip and uh, jar jar wick they played a great game um just happy that I recorded this one so I could post it. Um, anything else for the, the crew out there, Otto? I'd say yeah, it was a good game. I'm, I'm glad, to, uh, glad to see that they did such a good job of, of, of those uh, those Axis players, if they're watching this. I think they could pat themselves up on the back for pulling off a really big defensive line that nearly closed out the VPs towards the end. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, yeah, by the end of it, they were actually up on VPs like 88 to 80. So really, really close game. Well, uh, Otto, thanks for joining me. Really appreciate the, the thoughts and the insight. Anytime, man. Thanks for having me on. Yeah. All right, guys. Uh, that's it from us. Uh, we'll catch you all in the next one.